Do you need more games to add to your games to play? Well, today on Grow Up Level Up, we're talking about our backlogs and what we need to finish before the end of the year. This is Grow Up Level Up Gamers Club. Cue the intro. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nailed it. All right. To start us off, we got to open Jordan's <laughs> TCG, Pokemon TCG oh, pocket oh, here. Let's see what what do we get? New poll. Oh, a Wigglypuff E Wigglytuff EX. Well Wigglytuff done, EX. Jordan. A new well one. Done. Nice to get a new one when you're level twenty whatever and not getting new ones very often. So Oh true, true. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people are at that part now. But speaking of people, who am I? Who's this voice in your ear? People. My name is Samson, also known as Samson XP. Uh I host this show called Grow Up Level Up Gamers Club, where week to week we bring in Reviews, previews, uh, discussions, topics, everything revolving around the games that you should be playing in your 5 to 9 after your 9 to 5. And my trusty co-host is, as always, Sir Dr. JM, a.k.a. Jordan. What's up? That's me. Yes, yes. So, like I said at the top of the show, it's a chill episode. We're going to be talking about the games that we need to finish, what's on our backlogs, uh, well, the games that we want to finish by the end of the year so that, I don't know, we have a nice clean slate going into the new year. Maybe mm-hmm. some games to talk about in our inevitable 2024 Game of the Year episode early next year. Uh, lots of reasons why. But uh, yeah, like as busy gamers, as busy folks, we work nine to five jobs and that means we don't get to play games as our full time jobs. Uh, and what happens is shiny new thing comes out. We never finished the old thing. Oh, but shiny new thing. That's and then right. we get shiny new thing and old thing gets put on the, what we call the backlog or my Steam library list. Mm. Uh, so that's kind of what this episode is about. It's about going through the games we want to play. I don't think we're going to go through every single game that we have not finished this year because we will, uh, we'll be here a while. But yes. <laughs> I wanted to bring up a couple of games uh, to highlight. Uh, that we want to play. But first, Jordan, you said you want to talk about something before we get into our list. Yeah, and this actually this actually ties nicely into the backlog because this is one that I think might be on a number of people's backlog. Maybe they maybe they forgot about it entirely like I did. Maybe they neglected it because of the time of year that it came out last year. Um, or maybe they missed it entirely. And I really wanted to uh, give this game its flowers on our previous episode where we talked about game of the year and everything um and i really meant to well actually you started to bring it up at the start of the episode okay yeah and then i said no 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 we'll talk about that somewhere within the episode and then i completely forgot and then (laughs) uh the episode went long and then we ended and so i never got to really talk about it but what i wanted to talk about is of course uh god of war ragnarok's valhalla expansion uh, or DLC, or whatever box you want to lump it into. Mm-hmm. So this came out, I should have looked up the date, but to my knowledge, I believe it came out early December of last year. So I think it actually missed the 2023 Game Awards window. Um, I don't think it was out in time to be counted or, or nominated for anything. Granted, I don't necessarily know where it would have been nominated. Yeah. Go ahead. December 12th, 2023. So I think they yes. announced it at Game Awards or something. Oh, yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah, maybe they unveiled it there. So anyways, um, big fan of God of War in general, but of course the more recent entries, 2018 and uh, Ragnarok. I know some people on this podcast are not as big of fans as uh, (laughs) Ragnarok, at least. Um, I was a big fan of I'm not as much as a hater as Elden Ring. Yeah, (laughs) fair enough. enough. Uh, I I really enjoyed both. Um, I can certainly see where people come down on, you know, the, the first one. The first reboot, 2018, being better than the sequel. Regardless, um, Valhalla was a roguelite-style expansion that came out, or or DLC, again, whichever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. um, in December of last year. And it essentially acted as a bit of an epilogue to the story behind Ragnarok. Um, So it picked up, you know, basically right after the game ends. And it was the idea that, Kratos finds his way to Valhalla. I won't spoil anything, uh, but he starts making his way through Valhalla, and what he learns is it is basically set up uh, in you know in his world 
real life roguelite style. So he starts making his way through realm after realm, uh, sort of, you know, combat engagement after combat engagement with little bosses interspersed in there. Um, and as he gets further, he gets permanent upgrades. Uh, he also gets temporary upgrades, which only last for that single run. Then if he dies, he comes back to sort of the main gates of Valhalla, and then he gets to do it all over again. And uh, I wanted to give this game its flowers because this game completely captured me for the month of December last year. Uh, and even to the extent that I believe I wasn't fully finished with it going into sort of the holidays. What you might not know about me for the holidays is I live in Edmonton, but most of my family's in Calgary. So we do uh, usually spend about a week in Calgary. So Calgary trip ripped me away from Valhalla. <laughs> and I had to wait the whole time I was there and just want to get back to it. And then I came back and, you know, I only had a very small amount left. But uh, this game was a ton of fun for me. And I'm not usually big on the roguelite style. It really takes a lot to kind of capture me. Um, you know, I've played the Spelunky, so I've played the um, uh, Rogue Legacy. Um, I've played, I'm trying to think of other ones. Now, one of the big glaring omissions in my roguelite backlog from years past is Hades. Mm -hmm. Hades is one that I think I would probably get sucked into based on how much I loved Valhalla. Now, Valhalla, obviously characters I already knew, characters I already loved. Uh, and it really does, again, bring it back, uh, act as an epilogue in that it brings a lot of the story threads together that you don't necessarily expect or that I didn't necessarily think I needed to know about. But it really has some deep callbacks, that callback to like early in the uh, series back on uh, PS2 when it first launched and everything. So just completely out of nowhere, something <laughs> that I completely did not expect to want to enjoy uh and then i wound up absolutely loving i would i would even i think i've told people before if you weren't crazy about ragnarok but if you finished it go play valhalla because it is such a good loop um and it's so much fun uh that you, you gotta experience it and i i don't know if that game gets talked about enough or or was played enough because i don't think i heard a lot of chatter about it when it did drop it has all the quality of the other games and, you know, the, the nature of the roguelite style is, in theory, endless replayability. And they just kind of, it just kind of sprinkle these little tidbits of things that are like, oh, if you want to learn more about this, do another run. If you want to learn more about this, do another run. And it just keeps going and going. And I did eventually get everything and learn, you know, all of the lore tidbits that it drops and everything. Okay. But I love it. So. Yeah. No, um, I think you convinced me. I think I'll update. Oh, good. God of War. Because I did. I mean, okay. That, that was our hot takes episode where I gave yes. God of War Ragnarok a five out of 10. Mm -hmm. I, I have my reasons. If you want to see them go back to the, to the old episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm pouting oh. for the audio listeners. Yeah. Me mugging me. That's right. Uh, but, but I, I have been kind of seeking that roguelite uh, yeah. loop for a little while okay. now. I would say in the past couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, at first I tried, well, I mean, I redownloaded Hades, uh, um, Peglin, of course, is my comfort mm -hmm, game. Mm -hmm. Trying to look at my Steam list here to my right. I, I, I tried a couple of roguelites, but nothing really hooked me. So maybe I'll yeah. try uh, Valhalla. Uh, I do I do like the combat system of God of War. That was yeah. one of my, my positives. Um, and and it seems like the story is interesting enough. And mm -hmm. I like I like the fact that it's kind of baiting you with story to do another yeah. run kind of stuff. Kind of like Hades. That was, that was a big thing for me, and I think a big reason why roguelites haven't clicked with me in the past um you know they might have a story there but it's generally or in a lot of cases it's very light and in this case like i say already liked the characters so i knew i was in already liked where they're going just from the simple thread of oh we've been summoned here let's go check it out um and and you know i just enjoy that world so uh yeah, yeah i i really like it and um there's something else i was gonna say but it doesn't matter it's awesome awesome People should check yep. it out I'll play it. God of War Valhalla nice. on the PS5. It, so that one on it's your a backlog. free. I, I I wrote it down on my list as as you were chatting. Uh, it's free, right? It's like a free update. I believe it was free, and contrary to the Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Sheep problem, I think it is standalone. Maybe oh, okay. I can't. I can't remember. I mean, at this point, it has been you know almost a year since I played it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I don't think you have to have beaten the main game to do it. Obviously, you get a lot more out of it if you do. Yeah, uh, you got spoiled. 100 exactly, exactly. or something, right? Yeah, yeah. 
but okay, yeah. cool. I'll check it out because because it's been a, like a couple months, years mm-hmm. since I finished Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. Yeah, thanks for kicking us off with that recommendation. The backlog. Technically, it's within the calendar year. You know, yeah, it's, that's true. Uh, this Not episode, December, December twelfth. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Perfect. My first backlog game is one that I've brought up a couple times already uh, in the past couple of weeks, and that is Beastie Ball by, mm. just going to grab the name, and I think my mouse ran out of battery. Oh, no. So it is Beastie Ball. It is the game from uh, the folks that made Chicory, uh, Something Wishes, uh, and let me, my mouse reconnected, so let me try to find the store page. I wish I could offer some assistance. I mean, I could Google it for you, but it seems like you're on top of it. We made it. We made it. Uh, from Wishes Unlimited. Uh, publisher, Clay Publishing. Uh, once again, this game was provided by me by the lead developer, Greg Lebanov, uh, who was at the Twitch Vancouver meetup. So this is a game that I've been trying to play once in a while, but kind of play it. And, and for those who are hearing about this for the first time, It is very much a Pokemon game. The graphics are like a Paper Mario, Scott Pilgrim kind of style, but you are recruiting little monsters to fight, but they don't fight each other. They actually play a game of two-on-two volleyball. Uh, So if you want to hear more thoughts about it, check out the previous episode uh, where we talked about the games that, uh, where we talked about that episode. um, Talked about that game. That game. But that, this game uh, does still have its hook in me. There's lots to discover, lots to do, but it is like, a little bit of a time sink because every time I play, I end up playing like an hour or two. So I kind of have to pace myself. And it is nice to also check in and run, do a quick little mission, train your guy a little bit and keep going, which I guess is kind of how Pokemon is too. I never thought about it, but in mm-hmm. Pokemon, you can mm-hmm. very much like go go for an hour, hour run and complete your routes, go to the gym, battle and move on. Or you can go in, train your guy maybe your goal is just get one level up on your one guy and then close it and move on for the night or for the for the day so bc ball still really fun it's like a really nice game to just be able to lay back kick your feet up and the control scheme is simple enough that you don't need to like sit at the edge of your chair and lean forward uh it is very nice that you can just play uh slowly so bc ball is my first backlog hoping to finish it soon I'm definitely not far enough to finish it soon, but um, yeah, it's been really fun. I would say the biggest plus about it is the writing. And it does feel like I'm playing a comic book or cartoon. It's like every character is a little quirky, uh, yeah. fun dialogue options. Um, some of the mission structure is also creative. There's one that was like, uh, you have to find an audience for your game. So now you're exploring the town looking for people who look bored, quote unquote, I'm using <laughs> quote fingers, who look bored uh, to invite them to your game. And I'm like, oh, that's different than just like playing playing the mini bosses until you get to the gym leader or whoever. Mm-hmm. So, so far, so good. I uh, like the freedom, like the graphics, uh, lots to discover. And I hope it is not too, too long because, yeah, that's that's my thing with some Pokemon games is they take a long time to beat. But at least this one's okay so far. Yeah. yeah, Beastie Ball. Very cool. Are you still actively playing it? I know you were talking about it in the last episode, but... I want to say I only... Well, and this is our 9 to 5 issue, you know? It's like, <laughs> I've been busy. By the time I get to play games, it's like 10 p.m. Not even not even yeah. that 9 to 5 window. And then at that point, I, I kind of want to play some games with some friends. So one game um, I'll talk about a bit later on my backlog list, but that's another okay. game that... I've been looking forward to playing as well and then just trying to uh, make it there. There Friends. is a video playing on my end. Okay, well, we're good. Okay. Couldn't hear it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, what I've been playing, Beastie Ball. Um, it has been a lot of fun, but yeah, just trying to find time to squeeze it in. Absolutely. Trying to keep that Steam Deck charged so I can play it on uh, the couch or something. Perfect. Yeah, that's the tricky part. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. What's your game, Jordan? Well, um, so I've got to admit, I mean, it's funny because we often in planning this show, uh, one of us, um, oftentimes you, you are the, you are the owner and founder of this. Uh, oftentimes Uh, you will come to me with, that's right, with a topic and you'll say, Hey, do you want to talk about this on the next episode? And I'm generally speaking, I'm like, hell yeah. Um, 
there have also been a few times where I bring something and you're like, hell yeah. Um, what I have quickly found is that a lot of the time one of us brings something up and the other one takes it in a different way <laughs> than, than, than was initially meant. <laughs> so <laughs> you may have noticed, uh, if for video watchers and for you, Samson, you may have noticed my video kind of lagging out a couple times there while you were talking. That mm. is because I was trying to load up PSN profiles so I could look at what I have been playing lately that I want to get back to. Because when you said backlog, I had thought you meant everything that you didn't even touch this oh, past okay. year. So I made a whole list of games that I didn't touch this year that I want to get to. What I did on PSN Profiles right now, of course, is looked at games that I either uh, have started and got no trophies in um, or, you know, have gotten a handful of trophies over the past year. So why don't I... Yeah, it's probably... No, it's okay. I think you could talk about games that it is still in that ever-growing list, that seamless yeah. library, that, that PSN, uh, and, XMB, yeah. And that's still there. the thing is, like, you know, to me, the backlog is any game that I didn't get a chance to give the attention I wanted to, whether that means mm -hmm. missing it entirely or actually playing it. So I'll start things off with two games that I've been playing recently, and I'll just mention them briefly, and then I'll go into one that I want to get to, that I want to talk a little bit more about. Mm -hmm. uh, so those two games are games not from this year, but from the past that have recently come to the PlayStation streaming services that I've started up for the first time. That's Grand Theft Auto V and The Witcher 3. I've not played either of these games. They feel like glaring holes in my gaming history. And so I downloaded both of them and uh, and I fired them up and I've been playing them recently. Um, okay. It's been interesting. GTA V, I gotta say, handles like absolute mud. <laughs> you know, yeah. it looks yeah, pretty. Yeah, it's an game at this point. But it's very difficult like just the third person camera and the mm. controls are very difficult to wrap my head around. Um, mm. And it's funny playing it now and thinking, wow, this game came out on PS3 and 360. Did it not? Yeah. That's where it yeah. launched. Like near the end, but yeah. I remember playing it on my PS3. And it's now or been remastered and all sorts yeah. of things. So, you know, by all means, character models look pretty great. Vehicles have always looked good in GTA games. Um, and, and, you know, it, it is a pretty looking game when it wants to be. And it is fun to play when it's going. But that third person control, and I mean, you can switch it into first person now. It's no better in first person. Mm -hmm. But it just is a challenge. Um, so that's one that I want to spend more time with because it's obviously such a big game. Um, and, you know, uh, obviously a storied franchise. And with GTA 6 coming out, I mean, I'm sure it's no... There's no secret why they put it on PlayStation Plus now. Um, it's so that people will get back into GTA and get their brains thinking about GTA again. True, it Preparation is, yeah. Preparation for GTA 6 to launch, in theory, next year. So Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't believe how long that uh, GTA has been around because, like, I've worked I, I worked with kids before, and then they'd talk about, yeah, GTA 5, I've been playing that my whole life. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> I guess so. You were born a couple <laughs> Sorry, years what? before GTA Five came out, My and God. that is the one game you have played this whole time. Yeah, that's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. We should do an episode of GTA Memories if you have. Ooh, any, maybe. I've well, some, I I have a decent story about okay. GTA Three, but I don't have to go into it right now. Anyway, sure, sure. Ooh, yeah. Episode teaser, ideas. That's teaser all we for do. another episode. So perfect. Um, what? So The Witcher. Have you touched that much at all? So The Witcher, I did. I think I played it more than GTA. And I actually, mm -hmm. I would say of the two, I've enjoyed The Witcher more. Um, you also feel its age in the controls, which again, these really caught me off guard because these games are very highly regarded uh, across the industry. You know, they're critically well received. They're, you know, very popular. And it really surprised me that, you know, rewind the clock to whenever The Witcher 3 came out and games really controlled like this. <laughs> and I can't map my controls as I want to. I can't put my heavy and light attack on R2 and R1. Um, oh, yeah. And my blocker parry on L2. Like, it really just kind of gets me. But it was better than GTA. Um, huh. And by all means, I think they did, uh, like, an official remaster um, and or update for the Xbox Series 
and PS5 because mm-hmm. this game looks pretty. All pretty pretty much across the board, it looks really good. There's there's a little bit of that, you know, you can see the last gen kind of they don't uh, move across environments as mm-hmm. realistically as you might expect. You know, there's kind of this weird glide to them in some cases. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, just graphically, it looks really good. And it was yeah, I think, fun to play. So I think they did remaster it yeah. like not too long ago within the year. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I never played The Witcher either. Oh, OK. I think like high fantasy is just not. Oh, it's not, my not a high thing. fantasy guy. OK, OK. I mean, I know with asterisk because there are some worlds that I enjoy. Sure. Uh, like as much as I meme on Lord of the Rings, I do think it's pretty cool. The, all the different types of lore, uh, Witcher has always fascinated me. Game of Thrones, I, mm-hmm. I like, but um, but, yeah, yeah. So, not but, but reading reading books, you know, can't do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah can't no. do who's, that. That's who's tough. got time? Who's got time? I I was reading a book when we started this podcast, and now I'm done it. I haven't gone back to reading because got games to catch You're up great. on. Exactly. Got that back exactly. Up, so. Awesome. Uh, my next game, speaking of high fantasy, oh. and also speaking of uh, games that we haven't started yet, and there's oh, a miscommunication okay. there, I okay. also chose a game Good. that I haven't started yet, so no worries, uh, is actually The Plucky Squire. Oh, um, not what I was expecting you to say. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, the Plucky Squire I was very excited for, um, leading up to its release, which was like a, a year or more of, of them talking about it and teasing it. Yeah. Um, so so I think it came out in September and I actually bought it, but I never actually booted it up yet. Oh. Uh partially because of the kind of like lukewarm mixed reviews Reception. at the yeah. time. Um and then your comments about playing it with your child. I was like, Oh well, I don't have a child to play this yeah. game with. <laughs> so it's like, oh, when's a good time to play this game? Uh hopefully eventually. So um I I do want to play it. I do think I have to be in like a specific mood like mm-hmm. something easy something joyful i think the thing is i want to share it with someone right so i'm waiting for a good time to play it with with my with my partner with my wife mm-hmm. um just like yeah to to share that kind of cool unique experience and it is easy from what i've heard so that's yeah. that's honestly a positive for me i don't need the yeah. hardest game in the world and as long as it presents like a unique cool story in a cool way i'm happy with that so plucky squire I am excited to play it. I'm just kind of waiting for the right time. It's like waiting for the right mood of a TV show yeah. or something. Yeah, totally. I get it. I get it for sure. Yeah. Uh, what is your next game, Jordan? Well, um, I'll I'll pivot over to games that I haven't touched at all. I'm I'm glad oh. that's on the table now for both of us. We make the rules up as we go. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, and I mean, I thought about since since you brought up the uh, the fantasy side of things. I thought you were going to say Dragon Age because oh okay yeah yeah if I'm being, guard. yes if I'm being real I would I'm really fighting the urge to buy Veilguard because I just don't I, I don't know I, it's holiday season I don't want to spend my money on myself right now so I'm really fighting the urge because I want to play Veilguard I think I you know peering into my own psyche I think the reason why I was pulled into The Witcher is because I want that fantasy realm right now. I I am looking at Veilguard and wanting to play it. And I said, okay, what can I play? What's obtainable because it's free for me because of, you know, I pay the subscription uh, and is kind of in that same genre, um, you know, action RPG kind of thing. And again, Witcher 3 is fun, but it's also not a new game. Mm -hmm. And those controls, man, I, 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 I hate fighting against controls. I'm like, how did we not figure this out already? But again, Witcher's old. So anyways, I want to play Veilguard. Um, I wasn't going to talk about Veilguard, but I just, I really want to play Veilguard. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I want to support Bioware uh, after they've had, uh, you know, a rough go of it for the past little while. Yeah, I think it's Vin- hometown. And hometown, of course, hometown pride. That's right. I live in Edmonton where, where Bioware is uh, based out of. So mm. I really want to play Veilguard. I want to love it. I'm sure that I will like it just from the reviewers I follow that have played it, um, as well as uh, influencers, personalities, things like that. Jerrica, who was on her show a few weeks back, um, we know that she was big into uh, into Dragon Age, and she was very much looking forward to Veilguard. And I've also, I follow a number of people who have uh, done sort of a main playthrough, and then they re-roll another class. 
and they just play the game again because you know to me that says there's something there more than the story right it's the combat it's the uh, you know the way the different classes have different mechanics and everything like that just like people did with Baldur's Gate right um, a lot of people, if they ever make it through this main story, they go back, they reroll another character, another race, another class. Um, so I really want to get into Veil Garden. If, if there were a game on my list that I was going to go out and just drop the cash on, swipe the card, it would be Dragon Age, honestly. Sounds like a good contender for your treat yourself Christmas present this year. Fair point. That's fair. <laughs> fair point. Everybody needs one. Okay. Like, yeah. Veil, Veil Guard. I, I am also interested in just mm -hmm. uh, from a uh, critical and like, yeah, graphics wise and, and the gameplay looks cool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you're right. It's what am I going to fit in a like dozen yes. hour RPG? More than that, probably like 40, 50 hour RPG. Um, and then, yeah, really sink into that world because it would really consume everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're playing for a while. So, hmm. Okay. Yeah, Dragon Age: The Veil Guard. I'm surprised they're they're not going on like a Black Friday sale because I was surprised yeah. a couple other games already are on Black Friday. And if you're listening to this, it is Black Friday in North America. Used That's to be an American point. holiday. Now it's also a Canadian holiday, kind of where everyone goes shopping. Yep. So, yep. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Dragon Age: The Veil Guard. Yeah, not on sale on Steam at least. All right. Oh my gosh. This Steam player is a blaring in my ears every single time <laughs> I open it. Uh, all right. My next game. So speaking of multiplayer, fantastical abilities, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to segue. I was going to say, does Veilguard have multiplayer? No. I don't think it does. But uh, I'm going to use a visual for this. If you're watching on YouTube, get ready for Can't the wait. visual uh, transportation. It is a game called Supervive. A Ooh. Supervive MOBA BR meets Hero Shooter. A lot of a lot of buzzwords there for okay. sure. Jump, glide, shoot, bounce, nuke, spike your enemies in this free flowing chaotic battleground in the sky. Face off in uh, and and all out multi squad team fights. Take down boss monsters for big loot. Get that W and run it back. So this is very much a yo we are esports mm -hmm. kind of game. Uh, for those audio listening, it kind of looks like League of Legends where it's top down. And, you know, crazy abilities. Sometimes it's hard to see what's actually going on in the screen because it's very small. Um, but in actuality, this is actually a battle royale, very much like Fortnite or Apex. Sure. I would say closer to Apex than, than a Fortnite. But it is from a top-down perspective. Uh, that might remind you of League of Legends, but the way you control is actually with the WASD, the W-A-S-D. <laughs> and then... Um, you're aiming with your mouse and different abilities do different things. Like some abilities you place, some abilities you, you like lead and shoot. Uh, so there's lots of different characters, lots of different heroes. Uh, that's where the hero shooter kind of overwatchy huh. comparison comes from. And I was actually watching this game for a while. I forget how I was put on it. It used to be called project Loki. Um, and then I got invited to a couple of alphas, never participated oh, no in them because I was like busy. I, I, all I did was <laughs> sign up for like the wait list kind of thing. Fair enough. And then, yeah, the game fully came out in open beta. So I hopped on with a couple of buddies. We ran a couple nights of these and we had a pretty good time because one, I feel like we, and we drew this comparison a lot with another recent game, uh, Deadlock, which came out yeah. for, um, for uh t for the PC from Valve, um, and we drew a lot of comparison to that. But the reason why we I think we are hooked on this more is because we kind of understood what the game was right away. Mm -hmm. Um, it had that like, oh okay yeah, this is a battle royale. The goal is to get to the end. Oh okay, we're a twin stick shooter kind of mm -hmm. controls. The unique mechanics where it's like if you're watching the video, you can jump over these gaps or glide over the gaps. You can get spiked down onto the gap, onto the space. So when you jump over those big gaps and glide, you have to be a little careful that no one's too close enough to shoot you, shoot you down. And then, yeah, we were just off to the races and we finished the game. And then we're like, okay, let's play again. And then Thanks. now I think we want to play a little bit more. But Supervive is something that is just like, we understood what it is. We like the characters. The characters are... 
um you like get the parallels like uh in earlier one of the earlier videos there's one guy called oath i wonder if there's a picture here uh, called oath and he's very much the reinhardt in this world mm -hmm. this guy with the big fist if you're watching the video he's, he's the roadhawk he's the hooking guy um there's a uh, a guy that's like Soldier 76. I'm drawing a little <laughs> Overwatch comparison. There's a guy like Soldier 76 um, where he has a, a little assault rifle. So there's like parallels to everything. You kind of get what, what things are and the game feels good, of course. I would say that, yeah, it looks super chaotic if you're just watching super fast clips of these huge team fights. But in the team fights, they actually feel okay. Like... Yes, there are some abilities you didn't see before, but I think where it works well is that, and like Overwatch, like uh, Valorant, each ability is distinct, and okay. you're able to, you can tell which character is doing what, because mm -hmm. everyone has like a design method, design purpose right. kind of thing. So that was pretty fun. Uh, but it is very much a top-down hero shooter battle royale. It's like they literally mushed a bunch of mm -hmm. genres together. Um, so yeah, super vibe. Check it out. It's free. Theory craft games is the developer and publisher. Um, and, uh, yeah, this one, I think I'll play for a little bit longer until I know a certain date. I know exactly date. what you're thinking. Yeah. This game looks awesome. I don't know that I heard of it, but uh, yeah, it really looks like, you know, it's, it's like if they took overwatch and just said, made it the same viewpoint as league of legends. Mm-hmm. And, and then obviously it's a battle royale. So yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. For, for viewers and listeners out there, if you're watching and, or if you're not go look up the character oath, because the description of a Reinhardt character is, is apt, but uh, their face is not what I was expecting. So. All right. I won't spoil it. I'll let people do their, do their homework yeah. and check it out. Pretty funny. Yeah. I will say like one I don't even know if this is a critique. I just feel like, like, oh man, I wish this was third person because okay. the animations are so good. And right. Like, the, there's so much going on that I feel like a third person, maybe, yeah, like first would be like, this is Overwatch Battle Royale. Right. A third person, you, you, know, you kind of get around that. Um, I wish it was so, so I can see more of these animations and characters in detail because from top down, yes, it works and they <laughs> balance the game around that, but. And it does differentiate them, to be fair. Like, there yeah. aren't many top-down isometric battle royales. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Battle Bit, Battle Bright. That was an old game that I think is now gone. Uh, that that tried mm. that for a while, but Super Vive, pretty cool. Yeah, looks, uh, honestly, it looks, I'm impressed by by it. Um, co come on over to the PC side. <laughs> yeah, I'd like, like, I feel like. I like the style, uh, that's for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's it's fun. It's like, mm -hmm. and, and I don't want to dunk on Deadlock too much, but I think that's kind of where Deadlock lost me is that was very gloomy and serious, kind mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. But it, it was a lots of grays and, and right. browns, whereas this one is like purple and uh, the, the energy of the game is different too. Like when you win, it goes, it's just a big W. It's like you won W. <laughs> that's fun. Super vibe. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So that cool. one's pretty fun. I dig it. Yeah. What's your next game there, Jordan? Well, yeah, I mean, it's funny that you talk about Super Vive and then you hinted at another game that's yet to come out because that game that is yet to come out is going to be what pulls me away from everything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But one thing you touched on uh, with respect to Veilguard and everything is the time commitment. And because of that, I'm going to throw out another game that I would love to spend and invest my time into but yeah. I just don't know if it is realistic. And that's Metaphor Refantasio. Of course. Oh, yeah. Um, also, I could mention Persona 3 Reload. Same developer. Uh, of course, same style-ish games. Um, I th there's, there's some division in the developer. I think they both are the same developer, but it's, you know, the team moved on to make Metaphor instead of Persona. Something like that. Um but of course, I'm a big fan of Persona 4 Golden. Of course, best way to play it, PlayStation Vita, although it's available on Steam now, and I believe you can just play it on PlayStation, stuff like that. Really? Um, but I'm a big fan of Persona 4 Golden. Uh, absolutely fell in love with Persona through that game. And 
I have Persona 5 and I have uh, never gotten very far in it. And I want to try Metaphor, but I just know that I will not get very far into it because it is the definition of a sink your teeth kind of RPG, you know, I mean, JRPG style combat, but you really have to invest your time into it uh, to get everything you want out of it. And the big thing yeah. for me was, uh, I didn't know it at the time, but I think a big reason why I was able to get through Persona 4 Golden in particular is because it was on the Vita. Um, you know, I remember waking up on a Saturday morning, rewind the clock before I had kids. Uh, kid, I only have one. Um, but I remember waking up on a Saturday morning, literally rolling over to my nightstand and grabbing my Vita and just jumping right into the game while mm. my, you know, now wife was still asleep. And I would just, you know, pop some headphones in and, you know, the music, you're just jamming in bed on a Saturday morning playing that. Um, That's chill. Same thing with, you know, I had, depending on traffic, anywhere from a 45 minute to an hour and 15 commute on the bus uh, from work back to my home. And I would bring my Vita and I would hammer out an hour of Persona and you'd get to the, uh, to the end of the bus route and I'd be getting off to go home and I'd be like, man, should I ride it back downtown and do another loop? Cause I just wanted to keep There's playing. There's no way you can play a PS Vita game at home. No, no, absolutely not. Um, but th you know, the, the portability of the game is really, I think the big reason why I was able to make my way through it. Can't remember what I clocked in at the end. It was, I remember being at 120 hours at some point. I don't remember if that's what I ended at or if that was, you know, as I kind of went into the ending and I ended around 140, that seems to ring a bell. But everything I've heard is metaphor. I mean, it's nominated for game of the year. Um, every, every critical review of the game seems to be very positive about it. Um, mm. People have also talked about some of the themes being rather timely with uh you know events going on in the world and things like that and i want to play it but i just don't know if i can commit and you know dragon age on the flip side of that coin being a 40 ish hour experience is a lot more consumable than metaphor which is going to be easily double that and at the rate that i play these games and you know the way that i play i am a check every corner i am a look for loot in every turn and that kind of gamer. So the way I play these games, you know, I could go to how long to beat and see that it estimates, you know, whatever, 60 hours if you mainline the story. And I know I'm not going to mainline it, so it's going to take me 80. And if if I really enjoy it, then I'll go for extras. And then we're getting into 100 hours. And, you know, it just goes on and on and on. So it's going to be the one game you end up playing all year. It, if, year. If, it, if you let it, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It easily could be, right? That's the thing, so... Hmm. How do these game critics do it? Fit in so much time. Yeah. I think I think things have gotten a lot better for them. I think a lot of outlets now actually, you know, give someone the dedicated time to play through mm -hmm. these games. But I it it's funny because, you know, like that's a really good thing to bring up. I think about that pretty often when, you know, I watch these show uh reviews and, and outlets and things like that, and they have five people on and they're like, Yeah, I played through this and then I jumped from this into the next one and the next one. And oops, a lot of the time, you know, they're butting up against uh, embargoes and everything like that. And, you know, they want to have the content out right when the game drops and they got to get it done. I can't imagine how people played through Elden Ring. Like Elden Ring, I think I may have talked about it on this show. That's a game that like, Although I will play it a lot, like, you know, every night if I can, I'll do two, three hours in it. I'll stay up late and that kind of thing. Even still, I'm taking my time when I'm in the game and people are done with the game and I'm playing it for another two months because that's mm -hmm. just, you know, that's just how I like to do it. And it's just how I want to do it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think that's like a bigger conversation for oh, yeah. for people like us that, that don't do this full time, but we still enjoy consuming like or consuming is a funny word. We still enjoy listening to other people's opinions. And mm -hmm. most of the time does happen to be like game critics who, who play video games full time uh, mm -hmm. or, or do it for work. Um, so, so yeah, it's like how I know this game is good and I want to dedicate time to it, but yeah, my spare time or, or my, that game will have to be in my spare time. Whereas that game was enjoyed in their work time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 
That metaphor I also want to check out. I, I did. It's so bad because I played Persona 5 and about okay. five hours. Ah, okay. Persona 5 Royal. About five hours. I think I dropped off at the exact the same, same spot. spot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and then I'm like, oh, but I love this graphics. The characters look you know, cool. The, the music's style. so good. Yeah. The style. And I want and metaphor looks really cool. And mm-hmm. yeah, I heard really cool things about the story and the themes. And then it's like, man, but I really want to play uh the plucky squire or something. Yeah. But but yeah. that's a part of the draw is like the plucky squire will take you three to six hours, you know, if mm-hmm. you take your time with it. And mm-hmm. you know, unfortunately sometimes it is a what can I actually get through? What can I I think in a lot of ways sometimes it comes it feels like what can I fully experience versus what will I miss out on part of the experience, right? Mm-hmm. Lucky Squire, mm-hmm. I can experience the whole thing. I can come back with a fully formed opinion, uh, fully formed and informed opinion on the product. Whereas Metaphor, if I only play even you know five hours, but even 20 hours, 30 hours, 40 hours, I might only get 50% of the way through is you know, is my air quotes critical opinion valid at that point? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I would say it still is. Yes. Um, but it doesn't feel as fully formed and fully informed. So yeah, totally. it's, it's tough. It's tricky, tricky for sure. Uh, speaking of games, I still want to play a game coming out next week. Yep. Is it next week? Oh my is it gosh. next week? It is next week. You it's just got coming. Me so hyped. It's coming, and it is Marvel Rivals, the new 6v6 hero shooter. If I could do coming that from snappy finger thing, I'd be doing it. Snaps for, for those, uh, like the, what do you call it? The, those slime poetry. Slime yeah, poetry. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God. Marvel Rivals coming out super soon. Uh, Just trying to grab the dev here. Is it the 6th? Is it the 7th? Something like that. December 5th, according the to fifth. Steam. The it's coming four? sooner than I thought. I have the sixth off work. I didn't even um, do that on purpose. <laughs> it was I meant to be realized. I'll, yeah. see, I'll see you online. Hell yeah. But Marvel Rivals, superhero, actual hero shooter, uh, team based PvP, uh, all Marvel characters. They look absolutely gorgeous. It's developed mm-hmm. by NetEase Games. And uh, yeah, it looks, people are calling it like the next Overwatch. And I would say this is like, has a leg above Overwatch because it is pulling the Marvel. IP. Everybody already knows all, all these characters, most of these characters. Uh, now they're seeing them in this beautifully animated style and like, yeah, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. And we are very much hero shooter people. <laughs> so mm-hmm. so we are very excited to play this yeah. game. And honestly, like, despite all the games I want to play, I feel like this will consume the yeah. rest of my year. Uh, Absolutely. Just, yeah, just running it with friends every night. Is there crossplay? Can we finally link up? Yeah. I believe so. I want to say I already looked into it and I confirmed mm-hmm. it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm 100% with you. This is the game that I was hinting at, you know, is going to steal me away from any other game. Uh, this is going to be my God of War Valhalla for this year that I'm just playing throughout the entire month of December and just loving. Um, and, and honestly, I could see myself playing it beyond as well. Um, mm-hmm. I still have some reservations about it. You know, I watched a ton of gameplay. I watched a ton of streamers stream it back when they had those open betas and everything. Um, I'm a little concerned for my own well-being, knowing how that, (laughs) knowing how Overwatch pulled me in and I've been stuck on that game for eight years. um, I don't know if I can balance two, you know? So I'm I'm a little bit like... Two Overwatches? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little bit like, do I say goodbye to Overwatch and, you know, move on finally? It's tough. But I feel like for a while, this will steal mm-hmm. the Overwatch crowd away like us, like mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the content creators. So the conversation will be um, about Marvel Rivals for a while, especially for the folks that like to play these hero shooters. Mm-hmm. And, and as time goes on, like Overwatch is still in there. Valorant still in there. Apex to a degree. Um, so, I yeah. So it's like, hmm, do yeah. we have time in our lives for two Overwatches? Yeah, or two Marvel rival type games. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I it, it's tough to say. I think we really just got to ride it out because there's still so many variables. Like, oh yeah, like how how's Marvel Rivals updating a year from now? Like mm-hmm. how the balance changes. I think that's a huge one for for the enthusiast. Is like how does the game feel? Mm-hmm. Are they adding new characters fast enough? Overwatch now has a good rhythm uh, with all their seasons, but 
at the same time, it's like, okay, I know the next one's coming out. I'll, I'll, I'll join back in when the next tank comes out or mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. next DPS comes out. Um, but those are all questions we'll need to see for now. We just got to enjoy ourselves because we yeah. got another really cool hero shooter to look forward to. Mm-hmm. Um, as for crossplay, I think it does function like Overwatch. I'm pulling this from Esports Illustrated, yeah. which I didn't know existed. Uh, and it's saying like, yeah, yeah, there's crossplay, but PC and console can't be matched in Ranked competitive or whatever. Modes. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I uh, really excited for this for next. What what is that? December fifth. That is a Thursday. Thursday. All right, yeah. I'll be playing that all Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday I have a thing, but. I'll be right back on it the next uh, yeah. day. Yeah, and well, and I mean, I have Friday off in theory because I'd be traveling to Calgary for my company holiday party, but uh, <laughs> might just uh, might just go up Saturday and then come back Saturday so that I can keep playing. But we'll see. <laughs> there you go. We're moving mountains to to, to be able to play this. That's right. Um, who do you think? Let's let's pivot into our oh, podcast within a podcast. Our viral rivals. Marvel inside. rivals. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel Marvel Rivals watch over in the Mar- Marvel Rivals watch. I didn't even mean to do that, but uh, I see what you're going for. Uh, in this podcast, we ask one question to our guests, uh, and Wait. that one question today is: Who are you go- thinking of maining or playing first? I'm looking for a list of heroes so that I can accurately answer your question mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tier list: People have already released tier lists. Holy cow! <laughs> so so it seems like there is I'm just about 20 20-ish characters at launch One, two, three, four, uh, there's five, like six, three, three roles Vanguard which looks like the tanks Duelist which looks like the DPS or the damage and then Strategist which is uh, oh, I guess the supports the like is Loki a, a support I guess yeah sure so so we got our roles we got our characters i'm seeing yeah. 28 characters i can right? start first if she, she yeah you go if you know Ooh, you've played it as well i have not so uh, i have but on playstation instead of pc where where i got my yeah, superior my play. shut yeah exactly um let's see but if i were to pick one character to start I'm going to be a real basic and I want to play a Spider-Man because mm. yes, there have been Spider-Man games, but how does Spider-Man balance in a competitive game? Like mm-hmm. in the games, yeah, the the ones that came out on PlayStation, they are very much like a power fantasy kind of deal. Um, So I want to see how he functions in a PVP game. That's right. what I'm most curious about. Everyone else, I can kind of guess what their, uh, what their kits are and how they'll play. So... Yeah, how about you? No, uh, no interest in Penny Parker. Not sort really. of a Spider Man. Not a Spider Man, but True. you know, <laughs> Spider Spider Woman. Um, Spider not really? It just because I feel like you're playing as the Mech. Fair enough. Which and, I guess it's part of the fun. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I guess that is it. She's basically diva, as far as I can mm-hmm. tell, right? Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if she goes into baby form after you know being demeched, but seems like kind of a sure. wrecking ball. Uh, Every comparison I make is going to be to Overwatch, but <laughs> kind of a wrecking ball slash. Diva, Sorry, so. audience. Yeah. yeah, you should know. You should know. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, I mean, just looking at the list and not really knowing what all, like, what uh, role all of the characters fall into. Traditionally, in Overwatch, um, I do lean towards support, but at the same time, I don't play a ton of competitive. And when I'm not playing competitive and I'm not locked into a certain role, I more so go for situational counterpicks, right? Um, you know, if someone's dominating on whatever, uh, I don't even know. I don't have a good, I'm not going to go for someone. Anyways, um, favorite characters that I would love to try out though, Rocket Raccoon, probably my favorite MCU character. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of him. Um, but then also looking at the list, there's a there's a poll that I have uh, to Moon Knight. They've released some oh, art yeah. of him, and you know the the show was not a ten out of ten, <laughs> but that's a cool looking character design. So I gotta admit, you know that's appealing. Jeff the Land Shark. I know nothing about Jeff other than 
uh, when he came to uh, what's that other game? Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap. Yeah. Yes, two three can be put anywhere. Exactly. That's that's yeah. the only thing that is my only connection to Jeff the Shark, but uh, the Land Shark. Sorry, but I I <laughs> like the style. I like the idea behind him. Apparently, I'm into anthropomorphic animals. Um, hey. between him and Rocket, but but yeah. So <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> I think those uh those ones are probably where I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna try and try as many as I can you know that was the big thing yeah, with me yeah. for Overwatch it was so easy to jump onto any character and at the start at least their kits were un- easy enough to understand right off the bat you know okay this character shoots and has these two abilities these three abilities whatever um, characters obviously got more and more advanced and you know nowadays you have uh, Hazard who had a play test this weekend new character launching with season 14 um, and they have gotten a lot more complicated um, I won't say complicated, but a lot more complex. But uh, yeah, just just off, you know, the character design and and my pull towards the characters. That's who I'm looking at. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that is yeah. Echo everything you say. Looking forward to trying them all. I am also a counter picker. <laughs> I think there's more value in um. Well, I don't want to say value. I find value in being a little good at everyone instead of really good at one guy. I yeah. agree. Mystery yeah. heroes all the way. No, let's not get no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are pretty much all the games that I am looking forward to till the end of the year. Uh, Marvel Rivals definitely is my, I don't want to say game of the year, but game I'm looking forward to the most because yeah, mm-hmm. most anticipated. I'm just I'm just right in that you know that twenty one to thirty five yeah. age range. <laughs> they they do a lot of things to appeal to us and, and it's working. It's working. Mm-hmm. Uh do you have any other games, Jordan? Or was was that also are you also in that twenty one to thirty five age range with me? I am I'm definitely there with you. That's uh that's what I'm looking at. So awesome, awesome. Yep. Well, listener or viewer, do you have a game that we didn't talk about that you're looking to f- fill out in your backlog uh before the end of the year? Do you have a game that you want to play before the end of the year is what I'm trying to say. Uh, let us know in the comments below. Let me know on all the socials at Grow Up Level Up. You can tweet at us. You can blue sky at us. You can uh, Instagram message us. We're very open. We, we like to chat with our audience. So let us know there. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully with the power of good time management and uh, planning ahead, uh, and also getting really lucky with free time. <laughs> we will use our holiday hours and scheduling wisely and finish some of the games we want to play, or in the case of Marvel Rivals, just play it eternally because there is no finishing a game like that. Yep. Uh, so, well, this has been Samson, a.k.a. Samson XP. You can find me on all the socials at Samson XP on Blue Sky at smsn.bluesky.social Uh you can also find Grow Up Level Up on all the socials, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Blue Sky, all those fun things. Jordan, where can folks find you? Folks can find me on all social media platforms at Sir Dr. JM. That's Sir D-R-J-M on everything. But most importantly, Blue Sky, um, I I still have Twitter, but I am finding more and more. I just I tap on that little blue butterfly more than uh, yeah. that dumb X. I was about I was about to say that blue bird, but it's not a bird anymore. It hasn't been for it's I don't been know how long. So like like a year and yeah, time, say, time flies too long. But yeah, put it put it on your home screen. Put it on your home screen. Yeah, well, both are on my home screen. Ah, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I had a thought. Oh yes, next week. Mm-hmm. My thought is about next week's episode. I think that maybe. We will do our Marvel Rivals initial impressions for for next week's oh, episode. Okay, okay. As it comes out uh, a day before we record, potentially. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're following us on Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, so you'll be notified when the new episode goes up. Usually Fridays, sometimes Thursdays. It's a mm-hmm. mystery. Mm-hmm. But stay locked in and uh, yeah, tell us who you're excited to play. I almost said Overwatch. Play Marvel Rivals as. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, what is your wise words to exit our episode tonight? Well, I, I feel like I owe an explanation from last week. Uh, oh. My wise words last week came from the cover of the July 2011 issue of GamePro Magazine. 
Oh, what the? Yes. I have wow. A, I have a stack of video game magazines that I kept from my mostly teenage years um, that I decided I'm just going to grab one of them off the pile and I'm going to flip to a page. And I'm going to read you something. So last week we ended with more sass, less ass. That was with respect to the Tomb Raider reboot. Yeah. Yes. So this week's uh, wisdom will be dragons, shouts, and partying like your Gandalf give you more freedom to craft your own tale. <laughs>